Are you a federal man, Mr. Walsh? Hmm, way off, Sheriff. Claims adjuster, Cal Mutual Insurance Company. Okay, what can we do for you? I have to make out a report on the death of a Mrs. Lucille Benton. Well, it's all on the file. You're welcome to take a look. Fine, fine. That'll do for openers, but I'm afraid the front office will expect me to pry a little deeper than that. She was insured for $25,000. dollars Double for accidental death. So you can see if it turns out she was uh, murdered, for instance, we'd save a lot of money. Or if it were a suicide, the company wouldn't have to pay a cent. Well, you can beat your brains out asking a lot of questions. But it wasn't suicide, and it certainly wasn't murder. Yeah, well, that's probably what my report will show. But I have to look into it, or I don't get my check next week. Would you know legal evidence if you tripped over it? Sheriff, I had graduate training, CIC work, and six years as a police officer. I'll try to wrap this case up as fast as I can. If you could, let me have the files and the background that maybe doesn't get into the files. Walsh, you don't know anything about me except that my name's Johnny Kyle. 
But let me tell you this. If there's anything I do know about a case, it goes on the record. Thank you. Walsh. I represent California Mutual Insurance. I uh, don't have an appointment, but I was wondering if I could see Mr. Kimber. Well, I'm sure he can't see you today, Mr. Walsh. Can I tell him what it's about, and uh, we'll get back to you? Oh. Well, I'll just wait then. It's about uh, Lucille Benton and her accidental drowning. I think Mr. Kimber will want to talk to me, Miss Powell. How do you know my name? I have a habit of reading things upside down. I know Mr. Kimber has his own apartment here, and I know he's in. Could you announce me? Mr. Walsh, the funeral was only a few days ago. He's still not seeing anyone. Angie, I can't take these tax folders back now. We haven't even begun to get this straightened out. I've got to talk to Mr. Sam right now. Will you give him a buzz, please? Gus, he's not seeing anyone. Business has to carry on, right? Why, downstairs, we're completely stymied until this gets straightened out. Thanks. Mr. Sam? Yes? Gus is here. He says it's urgent. And uh, my name is Dan Walsh. And there's a Dan Walsh from California Mutual. Okay, send Gus in. Shows it can be done. I guess your insurance fellows have to be optimists, don't you? Don't worry about starting the full-length condensed novel, either. Miss Powell, how tall are you? With heels? With anybody. Read your magazine. You've tried everything? Within reason. Well, how do you propose we raise it? Well, I've gone over all the corporations, all the assets, and the only way to raise that much money that fast is to get rid of the Alexander Acreage. The Alexander Acreage. <laughs> About a year from now, it'll be worth twice as much. Well, that's possible, of course. Anything's possible, but I tell you, I've stayed up nights trying to figure out a way, and this is the only thing that... What, Angie? I'm sorry, Mr. Sam, but Johnny Kyle is on the line. I thought you might want to take it. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Put Mr. Kyle on for Mr. Kimber, please. Hello, Johnny. Fine, thanks. You? I thought you ought to know. I had a visitor, Dan Walsh, insurance investigator from California Mutual's head office. He's looking into Lucille, uh, Mrs. Benton's accident. I thought you ought to know. I think so, too, Johnny. Thanks. Uh, what did he tell you? I appreciate it, Johnny. Thanks very much. She, she was a wonderful girl. Bye. Now, the papers that I had Rifkin and Rifkin prepare for the sale are on I'll here. Leave them here. I just like to think there's some other way, though. Other way? But there isn't any other way to find 78,000, Mr. Sam. At least, I don't think so. Uh, well, I mean, like what? If you have any kind of a proposition. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll be available for a change. Thank you. You, Dan Walsh? Yes, Mr. Salmon. I thought you'd like a breakdown on the policies. Oh, uh, later. You're on, Mr. Walsh. <clears throat> I uh, represent California Mutual Life and Indemnity, Mr. Kimber. I'm investigating the death of Mrs. Lucille Benton. As a company man, you want to keep the possibility of suicide open, huh? Hmm. Why come to me? Well, it's common knowledge that you and Lucille Benton were the very best friends. Her best friends, some people say. And when people see those credentials, they talk pretty freely. My job. Especially since Lucille had filed for divorce from Nico Benton. People always like to chatter about situations like that, don't they? Mr. Kemper, you might be surprised how many people in this town are afraid to talk about you. No, I wouldn't. The 
Those who are afraid to gossip about me are the ones who work for me, but that's not the entire population. Why don't you talk to her ex-husband? I'll see him later. Frankly, I was led to believe that uh, you could tell me more about it. And uh, she was swimming in your private property. That doesn't have anything to do with her state of mind. And suicide is a state of mind, isn't it? What was her state of mind last week? She was healthy and happy and over any worry she had about filing for divorce. So you ruled out suicide? I suppose Cal Mutual would like to prove it was suicide so they'd be off the hook. Of course, if it was murder, you'd save some money, too. That's the first time the word murder has even been mentioned. And uh, me bringing it up automatically makes me a suspect? I have you placed 70 miles from here on one of your new construction projects at the estimated time of death. <clears throat> of course, that uh, wouldn't rule out hiring someone to do it for you, Mr. Kimber. Hiring? That seems foolish. Foolish and dangerous. Most murdered is. Who's the beneficiary of the policy? Her sister, Barbara. I've never met her. Have you talked to the county sheriff yet? Of course. First, that's standard procedure. And second, I already know that Sheriff Kyle told you I did. I think we'll get along. Yes? Pardon me, Mr. Sam, but Pete's on the phone calling from Jackson again. Okay, I'll take it. This call will take a half an hour. It's my construction boss. Mm -hmm. Why don't you meet me at the country club at 7 o'clock? Right. I'm not trying to get rid of you, Mr. Waltz. As a matter of fact, I really would like to talk to you. Got to crawl out into the daylight, you know? Hmm. No, I don't mind drinking, and I uh, like to listen. Right. Hello, Pete. Country Club, a Kimber Enterprise, too? No, no, this is the haven of the old money in this town. Their last stronghold this is not my kind of money. I uh, came in from the backwoods of Cascade County just at the right time with a, a claw hammer, an old truck, a keg of nails, and the, the nerve of a pickpocket. <laughs> Most of the old line families resent me because I made more than they ever did, and uh, I have penthouse windows so high that they look out over their heads, you know? <clears throat> and having one of their pretty young women fall in love with you? Sure. What the... Do you Boy, they do look alike. I heard Barbara was in town, but I, I didn't even go to the services. Who's the man with her? Her ex-husband, Nico Benton, and his mother and uh, an old family friend named Hathaway. Hello, Nico. Sam. Barbara Sherwood. Sam Kimber. I'm glad we finally met Sam. I'm sorry it had to be under these circumstances. Hello, Barbara. This is uh, Dan Walsh, Barbara Sherwood, Nico Benton. How do you do? I've already met Mr. Walsh. I do hope we can see each other before I have to go back. We certainly will, thanks. Can I call you? Anytime. Give the soda, Harvey. Must be a kind of wallop. What's she got against you? The company had me get in touch with her and uh, tell her we were holding a payment until we completed a routine investigation. She's no dope. She knows we'd like to prove Lucille was a suicide and save the 25000 I don't know how Nico can, can be his usual debonair self and sit right there next to a dead ringer for... You don't like Nico very much. He lives off women, his mother, Lucille. There have been others. He... Listen, Dan, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't want to stick around here anymore. I can't help looking at her, and every time I do, it's like a sock in the gut. All right? Anything you say.
There was a letter waiting for me from my sister when I got home tonight. It's kind of knocked me for a loop. Is she up? Yes, she wrote it to me the day that, that she went to the lake. She sent it to Baltimore, and it was just forwarded to me here. It's kind of important. You were fine at the club tonight. You uh, snubbed me like a pro. What did Nico say? Anything? Well, he's a little off balance. Uh, upset you know, that an insurance investigator is asking questions. That's good. Oh, here. The first part is just sister to sister talk, but read from there on. What? Problems, problems, problems? Yes, read. Problems. I was very slickly trapped into betraying a confidence and too much of a coward to tell the person who trusted me that the secret is out. Now, a third person has entered the picture, acting so strangely that I actually believe I could be in some kind of danger. Something of value is involved, of course. What else makes people sly and dangerous? If I could only take some sly little steps of my own to put B and C, put B and C off the scent, or just tell A, Complete truth, but I don't think I'm up to that. And, honey, I really am frightened. Do you think you could come out here for a week or so and be with me? I want someone with me. You were right, weren't you? To hire a private investigator? Yes, I'm sorry to say I was right. You have any idea who A and B and C could be? Well, I guess Sam Kimber must be one of them. He and Lucille... Um, no, I don't have any idea specifically. I want to keep this. Oh, yes, of course. You know, you have to add that letter to one other thing. The way Lucille was in the water, she was completely at home. I mean, cramps drown people who panic. My sister would never panic. Her lungs were filled with water. There wasn't a mark on it. You're not satisfied with that, are you, Mr. Walsh? Well, I'm satisfied. You're the person I'll tell first. I was relating a fact. I've checked that fact out today. I'll accumulate more facts. And when I have enough, we'll see if there's a meaningful pattern. There's motive, there's method, there's opportunity. The facts will relate to those three, or they won't. Thanks. I need someone to talk to me like that. Self-pity is a crummy emotion. When I do cry, I want it to be for her, not for me. Nico? Nico. I talked to him alone for an hour. He hinted at suicide. In the most delicate way possible, of course. Well, maybe, uh, maybe the breakup with Nico did bother her. Oh, of course it bothered her. It bothered me, too. I helped push her into that marriage, but she wouldn't have killed herself over a stupid marriage being botched up. Maybe she killed herself because she was in the middle of a rough affair with Sam Kimber. My sister and Sam were making each other happy. She was trading in a boy for a man. You know what kind of a man Sam Kimber is? I mean, did Lucille ever fill you in on all those Kimber enterprises? Oh, well, with nothing specific. I don't... Sam Kimber isn't perfect. He is an ordinary. And imperfect people, unordinary people, are the people who commit murder. <laughs> Angie, when I called, I didn't mean for you to stay. Well, that's all right. Uh, bowling doesn't start until 9.30, and there's plenty to do. Well, you take off whenever you want to. What is it tonight? Semifinals. We're playing the Shaker Sporting Goods gals, and we'll knock them over. <laughs> Did you locate Gus? Uh, he's waiting inside for you, Mr. Sam. Hmm. Oh, good evening, Mr. Sam. Well, I got right over when Angie said you wanted to see me. <laughs> you know, these tax boys are like a tree full of hawks watching one little chicken. <laughs> I told them that. I also told them they better not squeeze too hard. They might put a man out of business with a good supply of tax monies. And that's when they accepted the 78,000 compromise. It's very good, Gus. Hawks after nobody here but us chickens. <laughs> well, Mr. Sam, as you can see, the only action that makes any sense is unloading the Alexander acreage. Now, when you sign this... I told you maybe I want to hang on to it. You've got to get the money in a simple and obvious way. A way in which the Internal Revenue guys can check and double-check. And monitoring every move. And we're, uh, we're on a tightrope. And uh, if I may say so, Sam, you haven't been 100% frank with me, you know, and that worries me. 
I didn't realize that, Gus. I computed your net worth in one of the ways they use, Sam. Went back a lot of years and dug into a lot of old records, and I came up with a different net worth and we show on that balance sheet, Sam. How much different? Well, enough to let me know that you stashed away a little emergency fund. Cash. Between 150000 and 350000 A concealed asset. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is you can't use that money now. If you try that now in order to hold on to the Alexander acreage, you could be in a lot of trouble. Where would I keep that kind of cash? Well, I, if, uh, the safe place? But like where? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Please, Mr. Samuel. Talk while you can. You gave it to Lucille to keep for you. When I found out that you had the cash, I tried to figure out where you'd keep it. Not here, not in the vault, certainly over the subpoenas, or I figured maybe Lucille. I, I wanted to make sure. That... When? When? Last month. Last month when you were out of town. I ran into Lucille and bought her a cup of coffee and just sort of casually asked if it was in a safe place. The way she looked at me, I knew she had it. And she knew I knew. And then you had to brag to somebody how clever you were to figure it out. No, no, Mr. Sam, I, I swear, I swear I didn't. You're so stupid you don't know the rest of it? Lucille's dead and the money's gone? Gone? $270,000 cash. Well, maybe she hid it better than you thought. You don't think I took it? You haven't got the guts to take it. It's gone because you have to be cute. You pull every file of mine out of your office and have it in here before tomorrow night. Your lease is up at the end of the month. No, no, Mr. Sam, you need me. You need a buyer for the Alexander Acreage. What buyer? You or you and Nico Benton together? You're moving up in the society world, Gus? You're getting Nico to help you with a sure thing? Huh? Now, listen. You listen. I can tell those tax people that that balance sheet isn't entirely accurate. <laughs> We need some new tax people and accountants, Angie. Well, Carlisle and Schilling have always seemed anxious for the account. Shall I get them over here tomorrow? Yeah. I usually don't end business relationships that way. Some weeks it just doesn't pay to get up. Angie, what's the... If you do things like that, I'll have to quit. Like what? I wasn't being like anything. Have I made a pass since... Angie, I didn't mean anything. All right, I, I guess I just don't like being pawed. And it's after hours, and when it's after hours, some guys get... You don't have to worry about being pawed by me. All right. Is there anything else you want me to do? Just win the semifinals. Don't worry. Good night, Mr. Sam. I'll lock the outside door. Good night. Up with me, pal. I told you not to come around. I want to talk to you about your wife's insurance. Get off my property. Write me a letter. Oh, not foolish, Nico. I'm not a brush salesman. I'm investigating your wife's suicide. Suicide? Lucille didn't kill herself. Did you make her so happy she never got depressed? What kind of question is that? Look, I, I don't know who you've been talking to or what they told you. I was out of line. Okay. Lucille was going to come back to me. So what was she doing with Sam Kimball, trying to punish you? Well, they were just friends, that's all. He was helping her with a business investment. She had better taste than that. Even after what everybody was saying about Lucille and Sam Kimball, you'd, uh, you'd take her back. I'm not exactly perfect myself. Of course I would. Because if you didn't, your mother would cut you off. Who told you that? What's all this got to do with insurance? Look, Walsh, I answered all the questions Johnny Kyle could think of. I don't think I have to answer them again. It's official. She went swimming alone, and she drowned. Well, somebody drowned her.
Hello, Mr. Walsh. Hey, I got you a note at the motel. You uh, found anything in your sister's effects? Anything significant? No, nothing significant. No notes or important letters. Just the kind of things people don't throw away. I wish I could do something. I kind of had enough here for one day. Just let me straighten up a little bit, and we can get out of here. Don't let me forget to return this key to the apartment manager, huh? Didn't the uh, sheriff's office send Lucille's effects back here? Sure, they're right there. Why? Where's her own key to her apartment? What keys were there? Well, just these, but there's no key here that matches that. These two keys are the car keys, and uh, these two are door keys. One could be to Dr. Staley's office where she worked. Well, the other one could be to Sam Kimber's place on the lake. I know she's met him there. Phone disconnected. I don't know. I didn't try. Hmm. County Sheriff's Office, please. Thank you. You know she had uh, her own key to the apartment. Hundred to one, it was on this ring. Sheriff Kyle, please. Dan Walsh. Yes, Walsh. Walsh, everything she had on her or with her was accounted for. Now, look, I've got the inventory list right here. Complete down to the lipstick and uh, postage stamps. It says, key ring with tab engraved Lucille and four keys. Now, if you say none of the keys fit the apartment, then none of them do. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Well, maybe she kept it in her purse and it got lost on the beach. You want me to sift the beach? Are you sure you're not trying to make something out of nothing? Have you let anybody else into the apartment? Mr. Sam Kimber asked to be admitted the day after Mrs. Benton died, and I approved the request. Because he needed some bookkeeping work Mrs. Benton was doing for him. And the manager, Mrs. Carey, admitted him. She was present while he found the books and locked the apartment after he left. Kimber didn't have his own key to Lucille's apartment. Is business awfully slow at your office this time of the year? Is that why you're reaching so far? Thank you, Sheriff. I'll keep in touch. What was all that about, Sam? The sheriff let him in here the day after. Well, has anyone else been in here? You know they have. A or B or C. Whichever one drowned her. Mr. Kimber can see you now. Good luck Saturday. Oh, the finals, thanks. If I were still in town, I'd like to come watch you and uh, give you a little moral support. Unless your boyfriend might object, and I imagine he could object from a pretty fair height, huh? Well, with his office and the bowling and the church, I really don't have time for things like that, Mr. Walsh. He's waiting. Thanks. Either you're very patient or you like to watch Angie walk in and out. Join me? <laughs> Could be both. <clears throat> Whatever you're having, Bill. That's simple. What was Lucille's policy number? It's a DCA policy ending in 3774-B for Benton. I want to call Cal Mutual and tell them what a good man they've got. Mm, appreciate that. Remind me not to play poker with you. Your eyes didn't even flicker. You uh, lost me there, Mr. Kimber. Get off it, Walsh, if that's your name. Or is that part of your cover story, too? Lucille had a $2,000 policy, straight life. I know her personal affairs, so your story's a fake. Who are you? Well, the name's the same. Uh, who owns this uh, detective agency? <clears throat> I do. How many employees? Your fees must be substantial if you handle only one case at a time. Yes, they are. Who's paying this one? Well, who else besides me thinks that Lucille was murdered? Don't give me that sanctity of the client, either. Don't you understand we can help each other? Maybe you're right. Your sister hired me, Barbara. Does she have a reason? At first, it was only a feeling, enough to warrant an investigation. And then she, uh... Showed me this. Anything else, Mr. Sam? Oh, no, Angie. Uh, good night. I'll get the mail ready then and say good night. 
I'm the one she calls A. B is my accountant, Gus Heckman. I just fired him. He triple sealed him about a month ago. She should have told me about it. I don't know who C is. I wish I did. I stopped playing games, Mr. Kimber. Maybe we can both stop. Well, that's on the level. All right, let's say I believe you. I figure you gave her something valuable to keep. The next day, you went to her apartment to get it. You picked up some account books that didn't mean a thing and told the manager you'd got what you came for. I don't think you did. It was already gone. So, uh, you want to know what it was Lucille was keeping for me, huh? Well, it might help. This uh, could put me right back in the sling, Dan. Let's make it uh, Dan and Sam, okay? I guess we're both working the same side of the street. Prove it. Fair enough. Lucille was holding my getaway money. If I had to run, I could have sent for her any time, any place, and she'd have brought it to me. $270,000 in cold cash packed solid in a blue airline bag. I lied to her what it was. I think I'd lie to people about that, too. But C knew what it was. Then he had to follow her to the lake or make a date to meet her there. He had to drown her, not leave a mark on her. Then he had to know which key to take to get into her apartment. You don't have to kill somebody just to rob their apartment. You're getting as complicated as that Bond guy. Uh, what's his name? Always uh, fighting the master criminals. Did uh, Lucille have a key to your lodge at the lake? Yes. I've already checked her other keys. Two car keys, the one to Doc Staley's office. So whoever took the apartment key had to know what the apartment key looked like. And he had to learn about the money from Gus. Maybe I can lean a little more on Gus Hickman. OK. Now I've got to go uh, tell the sheriff something I uh, I gave him my cover story to. Oh, he'll be bugged, but he's all right. If he gives you any trouble, let me know. You obviously earn your money, Miss Powell. Anyone who works for Mr. Sam is very loyal to him. It's about time for a drink before you go home, is it? I never drink alcoholic beverages, Mr. Walsh. Well, I meant coffee. All right. Drugstore downstairs? All right, fine. Five years working for him, I, I think that I know him better than anyone else. He just isn't himself these days. A man ought to go away somewhere and uh, get on his feet, stop all that drinking and keep some sensible hours. You have no idea how many problems came up all at once. Hmm. So, uh, I think that you should turn in a negative report on Mrs. Benton and Leave Mr. Sam alone. I know that it's your job, but you're just making things worse. Well, maybe I will have to turn in a negative. Well, what else could it be? She was she was nothing to him. Well, that that isn't what I've heard. Maybe she thought that she meant something to him. But she was just something handy. You sound as if you resent her. I guess that's only natural, you being with him such a... Why should I resent her? I wouldn't resent any of Mr. Sam's friends. Unless they tried to hurt him. I, uh, I'm only sorry that she died in the middle of her dirty affair. Because now he confuses his mourning with his unsatisfied lust. But he'll get over that. No, I, I have no reason to resent her. She's been punished. I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand. Most people don't understand. Evil never touches me, Mr. Walsh. Well, I'm, I'm glad we could have this little chat. You will take it to heart, won't you? I certainly will. Who is it? Gus. 
I tried you at the office before, and I, I tried you at home, too. Well, I went out to get a sandwich. Tell him I'll have all his stuff turned over to him by 5 tomorrow. What's the matter with him, Angie? You heard him yelling. You saw what he... He's not himself, Gus. Mr. Sam will get over it. Uh, too late to do me any good. That all depends. What do you mean? Mr. Sam needs you, and I think I have a way it could work. You do? You think there's a chance he might reconsider? Why don't you come over to the office right now? Well, someone might see me. That looks strange. Uh, where then? Angie, this is the best news I... I have to go to Dr. Staley's. It's Thursday, my fill-in night. But I'll be through at 11. So why don't we meet at 12 on Tyler Street near Mr. Sam's new construction? Um, that's close to my place and it's close to yours. I know what you mean. Angie, I can't tell you how I appreciate this. Don't get your hopes up too high, Gus. It's just something I thought of. Bye. I'll see you there. And thanks again. Lord, you, you scared me. That's blasphemy, Gus. You could give me a heart attack. Come on out back. We can talk. All right. Well, uh, what are you going to do if you can't patch it up? Well, I have to think of myself. How to hold on to my other clients. I'd have to say that he, uh, he asked me to finagle his tax work, and I, I refused, and he threw me out. That's a lie, Gus. Then why didn't he tell me everything? If he'd only told me, I, I wouldn't have had to find out for myself. I thought Mr. Sam got sore because you told someone else. Oh, no, no, I never, never did. I, I, I swear to you, I... Ah. Uh, so you know what it's all about, too. I would have been proud to keep it for him. If he'd asked me. But he didn't. The more I thought about it, the more I... I realized that he must have given it to that woman. So I went to see her in the night. You talked to her? Yes. She tried to lie to me. But it didn't work. She thought that you told me about the cash. She said that you tricked her. I don't think you should have said that, Angie. I'm going to protect him. With all my heart. And with all my soul. Do you think that I would let him run off with that immoral woman? Do you think that, that I would let him run off alone with that money? I'm going to protect him the rest of his life. That woman would be alive today if you hadn't been so sneaky. And you, you'd be alive tomorrow. Year. It figures. All right, but I still feel... I can't go on how you feel, Walsh. If I went on how I feel, you'd be out of town for not laying all your cards on the table in the beginning. Now, I got plenty of work to do. Can I call on you later? If it'll make you happy. 
Here you are. Morning. Hello, Angie. Mr. Sam's expecting you. Go right in. Isn't it terrible about Gus Hickman? Just like that, you never know. No. Coffee? Oh, thanks. You uh, been out? Why? Put an ad in the paper, I'm sorry? If I heard his heart attack along, I am sorry, but <laughs> I'd do it all over again, I tell you. I'm only sorry I didn't get any more information out of him. I just spent an hour talking to Gus, the secretary downstairs, and I finally got her to let me make a copy of the top of his scratch pad here. Are you serious, Dan? Yeah, I know, it's doodling, it's scribbling nonsense, but you see this 12 here? He died not long after that. Carl's established it. Maybe he made a 12 o'clock appointment over the phone. No, uh, he was found dead on Tyler Street, right? So? Well, Tyler Street is just two blocks from where Angie lives. Angie, come on, you better write that book or something. Didn't you uh, tell Angie that Gus might cause trouble for you? You think Gus met Angie over there at midnight? She wouldn't meet a man anywhere, I know. AP happens to be Angie's initials. Well, the phone book's full of possibilities. Angie, but... Well, Sam, she gave me the impression she had a very narrow outlook on life. She doesn't date anybody. That physically healthy animal out there doesn't date anybody. Now, that, uh, she had mixed up. And she didn't approve of your relationship with Lucille, you know that. Well, all right, so she was a little tight-mouthed about it. But that was none of her business, was it? Anything that happens to you, Sam, is her business. Hers is that kind of loyalty. And isn't she in a position to know almost everything about your personal affairs, even about the money? Boy, I don't know. You... She'd know which was the key to your lodge and which was the key to Doc Staley's office, so she'd know which had to be the key to Lucille's. Why would she take that kind of money? Maybe just to keep it away from Lucille. I've seen people like Angie Sam, and that's one type you don't forget. They, they hear voices, they feel invincible, or they feel they're here on Earth to meet out justice. I'm going to get her to make a move against me. I can convince her I'm corrupting you. All right, if you say so. Oh, that was fast. He's in no condition to discuss business. He's got problems. Why don't you help him out? I do everything I can for Mr. Up Sam. to a point, Angie. He's got money problems, and he's got emotional problems. And you're the kind of girl who can uh, make him forget him. Don't talk like that to me. All right, Angie. If you won't, I'll bet I can find somebody who will. All set! Well, no comment. <laughs> I guess I better have one of these, huh? Sure. She I just got back from lunch. Thank you. Angie, can you come in a sec? Honey, this is uh, Angie Powell who keeps things humming around here. Angie, this is Barbara Sherwood, Lucille's sister, as you can see. Hi, Angie. Over the weekend, Barbara decided to stick around a little while. Maybe a long while. She'll be at the Three Pines Motel until we can find her something better. Maybe Lucille's apartment, I don't know. Anyway, I uh, wanted you to meet her and uh, get to know her because uh, anything she needs and I'm not around, I want her to call on you for some help, you know, uh, charge accounts and things. My drink's gone, lover. Angie, you understand, don't you? Yes, sir. I think I'll take Barbara up to Jackson this afternoon to look over the project. I don't know uh, when we'll be back. Do you feel that sure? She looks so sweet and decent. Oh, I'm practically certain. But uh, if we're wrong, Sam and I will explain to her why we did this to her. Hey, can I get into some clothes? I'm beginning to feel kind of sleazy. You were perfect. If you're right, we're all vulnerable. Yeah, that's why I want you and Barbara out of the way. Then what, just wait? If she's as unbalanced as I think she is, it won't be long.
Dan Walsh. We understand each other, don't we? I can tell. The way you look at me, I, uh, I know what you're thinking. You're a very intelligent man, Mr. Walsh. I can't hide the truth from you. I have to tell someone the whole thing. How it all happened and how to get the money back. Yes, Angie. I couldn't tell anyone else. I'm running away. But you want to get the money back for Mr. Sam, I know. So it'll be waiting for him when he comes back with that woman you got for him. I could hide everything from other people. I fooled Johnny Kyle before. But I can't hide it from you. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you. But I'll show you where. If you come alone. Promise you'll uh, meet me alone. If, if you don't, if there's any other car or anyone with you, I'll, I'll be able to see. You got a deal. Meet me at Mr. Sam's property at the lake alone. Leave him alone. Let him rest. Let me see if there's any more of that lake water in his lungs. I can wait out here, can't I? Anywhere, as long as it's out. Uh, I just wanted to... Later. He's still among the living. I owe that guy a lot. She tried to drown me. Dan. Where is she? They've got her right down the hall. You've been good to me, Mr. Sam. The way you understood good. But I must punish you, too. Lucille Benton was black with sin. And Gus was a liar and a thief. And they both tried to lead you into evil ways. So I must punish you, too, Mr. Sam, more than taking the money from you. I destroyed that the night I took it from her. It really doesn't hurt. It's a wonderful, peaceful feeling. And I know what I have to do. 